We don't care to say nothing. So then, shout, shout out to God MC. Baby girl, she was born in poverty, a crazy girl. Product of the cold street at age 12. She got a boyfriend, they do it all the time like she was a toy then at SS2. She's tested pregnant, she's dropping out of school cause her dad is a messenger. They say life is crazy, I'm passing through the pain every day so my eyes is hazy. I'm going to school, trying to learn something but I know no book cause I ain't thought nothing. My teacher is hungry, he's paid and change. Matter of fact, he's waiting for his paying day. So he goes on a strike and I'm left in the streets. I'm bogged all day by EFCC. Cause my money's in the West Indies. All young kids playing on the internet. That's the recipe. I got to swindle, man. I need money in my drawers. Now this con man calling us YY boys. The prison with Badu, it's so hard to handle. Tell him go get IPP. I'm a street mic, I'm in the street every day and night trying to get the cheese, I'm devious, I make you bleed like a chick on a period. So don't stop my shine, man, cause my blood will really take rhyme, man. Let's walk, let's talk. Street mics! I got a love on my mind. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the African wahala we are back again once once again to communicate with you guys about the different wahala that we have in many african countries starting with nigeria and i have my co-host olola day in the building bloody was good bro yeah we, we bless god everything is fine everything is prime no I'm looking forward yes to... how, how is the weekend going so far how is the you know the huh? hustle yeah, as, a, as an African man, you have to uh, put in a mystery behind you, you know, every time. Mm. You can't, you can't rest, you can't, you know, lay down, you just have to put in the effort for yourself, for your family, so. Yeah. You're still you know, on the grind, you do all you can, you know, just to make sure that we, we do things that are legitimate. Ololadi, I don't know, your audio seems to be a little bit down. Or oh, is it just me? Maybe it's the background noise. Does it does it sound better now? Yeah, it sounds a little bit better. But you know what? Let's not waste too much time. Let's jump into the discussion of today. Very important. We are starting with the the Nigerian police. I don't know if you heard about a strike that they are about to embark upon. So the Nigerian police force has decided to embark upon a strike because their welfare is not properly taken care of their salaries are not paid on time their barracks are trash we all know that the police barracks across nigeria are like um concentration camps the police barracks are like nigeria basically you know in fact the police barracks are even worse than nigeria you know so these guys have become monsters over the time over decades they are not paid properly their welfare is not met when they get killed sometimes the family members don't even get compensation bro there is a lot that the police is dealing with so they in turn take out the frustration on the people on the nigerian people that they vowed to serve and protect now they've decided to go on a strike and these are the key points that these guys came up with why they are going on that strike according to this article from people's gazette in a document referenced this there is an actual document that can be traced the police officers have decided to schedule a protest in eagle square in abuja and the title of their protest is we are tired of negligence I'm telling you guys the truth. This sounds very similar to what people like Omoye Leshoware has been saying. We can't continue like this. Revolution now. And that's the same thing the police are talking about. One more thing that the police said here was that all junior ranking officers have been banned from their duty posts, including those attached to politicians uh, as from the date of the protest. The date of the protest is March 26th. We have a lot to unpack here. Another point that this guy said here is poor salary and welfare 
non-issuer of kits and accrued treatment whatever that means non-payment of duty tour allowances non-payment of courses allowances poor barrack accommodation non-promotion as that when due and then to top it all off the police are complaining about their salary they said an officer with the EFCC, now they are comparing the salaries between the police and the EFCC. So an officer with the EFCC in level three earns 280,000 Naira monthly, while a police constable on the same level earns 45,700 Naira monthly. Brother, where would you like to begin unpacking this conversation? Or you can have me start if you want. Uh, well, there, there are many places you can, you can start from. Right? Yeah. So, the police officer that's supposed to be enforcing laws, you know, these are people that have, you know, um, weapons, guns in their possession. You know, they are the same people that protect these politicians and their girlfriends and you know and their family members and they are being paid so poorly that they have to find a means to survive you know and and I, i'm i'm glad they put comparison to EF, efcc officers so we can all see you know the comparison from what they get paid to what yeah and an average efcc officer get paid right and what this tells us is the country is just in total, total, I don't want to say total, complete collapse, but it's almost getting to that point because every facet of life, you see that breaking down, as broken down, you know, you see protests and you see strike and people complaining from every angle, every angle. We have also strike that, that's been going ongoing for like months now, right? Students yes. are not in school. You have the police complaining, the soldiers complain on the war front. People that are supposed to be protecting us and fighting the terrorists are not being given weapons. They're not being paid well. You know every single thing. It's you see things like this for a good government, for a responsible government. Little things, not even little things. These are like big deals. Pardon me saying little things. These are big deals. Things like this should make somebody that has dignity to retire. Somebody that has dignity to resign. Somebody like somebody like Buhari, you know, being the president of the country and all these things are going on. You Bro, should that's not, that's feel not ashamed. Happen. That's not I happen. know we yes, it's not gonna happen. We know the kind of country we are, right? Bro, it's to even make happen. it worse. Let, let me let me let me chip in real quick to make it worse you can see the picture that i'm sharing on the uh -huh. screen so you just spoke about you know compounded with the police strike that is about to begin there is the asu strike academic staff union of universities uh -huh. now in this picture that you can see here buhari was in london england as you can see from the design of the building the fact that this guy here is wearing a jacket this one is wearing a jacket this is not nigeria this is the UK. So Buhari went to the UK for medical treatment because there is no hospital in Nigeria that he trusts to take care of his health. And it has been that way for so long, even though Aso Clinic in Abuja, in Asokoro, that is responsible for taking care of the mental, of the medical um, situations of the presidency, is allotted billions of Naira every single year billions in 2021 10 billion naira was allotted to aso clinic so that it can be um refurbished the archaic equipment can be replaced and stuff like that but that same hospital buhari doesn't use it it goes all the way to london for medical reasons now this guy here is the minister of education he's also in london to see buhari and allegedly on a medical reason as well meanwhile asu is on strike right this guy here was the is a APC chieftain of some sort. They had some clash in APC. He went. He also went to London to chill with Buhari. So it shows you that these guys don't give a damn. 
about the country they are never going to retire they've failed on all their promises and we have all the promises documented i will share that on the screen soon you can keep going brother yeah um you 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 made a good point adamo adamo you know minister of education is he has something back home in nigeria that he should be addressing at the moment it is the same guy that that you know that got upset because the nas president which is uh, national association of nigerian student president talked to him in a way that i didn't like you know we addressed this the other day that these yes. guys they don't feel responsible and at the same time they feel insulted when you ask them for their for them to face their responsibility and do what they're supposed to do. The same Adamu is in London to see Buhari and allegedly go for medical checkup. Why millions of students in Nigeria are you know sitting at home doing nothing, mm. being idle? We have our youth, most of our youth, and Nigeria is a country that has people in the in the um, age range of between 18 and 35 years those youthful individuals should be put into good use most of them should be in school and the ones that are out of school should have good paying job that should be driving the economy but what do we get in the country we have a majority of the youth not having jobs and the few ones that are in school are not doing anything because the ministry of education decided not to face what they support not to do what they're supposed to do in terms of paying the lecturers good money and the lecturers are on, on strike police is going on strike you know people are complaining about you know increasing for price you know everything seems food price everything seems to be going wrong and what do we get from these guys a kind of like a drastic approach to things a kind of i don't care you know attitude like you know whatever happened it happens they don't these guys don't care i so, said it and it seems like repetition and saying the same thing over and over again but that's just the truth these no, guys it, don't it's care it's important we continue repeating this because a lot of people don't seem to be aware okay people just they just let it go some bro it's important we continue repeating the fact that these guys don't care because they are colleagues these guys that don't care are trying to come back in 2023 through another fraudulent election to become the president i'm talking about guys like atiku guys like tinobu and all those other few few past politicians they want to come back and continue the massacre that they begin so it's important that we continue reminding people that the consequences of having these reckless guys as the leaders is why we are currently in a country without electricity without um, petrol even though you're an oil producing country you have no petrol in your petrol stations you can't even sleep comfortably at night because it's hot it's dry season it's hot you don't have light to power your fan or your ac in fact to have an ac in your house is almost luxury you have to be a rich man to have ac in your house can you believe that ac is luxurious now majority of the people are poor so they have fans in their houses but you don't even have power you don't have electricity to power that fan and you don't have gasoline to power your i pass my neighbor generator to power your fan so you can't even sleep properly at night all thanks to this system so it's important we continue repeating the fact that these guys don't give a damn and it brings me to my next question buhari recently came out and he said man i apologize to you nigerians for the suffering that you're going through not having electricity not having petrol not having nothing you're stuck at home your asu is on strike your police is about to go on strike before I start talking about the insecurity and the the extreme inflation that is going around, do you believe him? Obviously, I know you don't, but I know you don't believe him. 
but can you explain why you don't believe him and why nobody should believe this when he is apologizing from his hospital bed in london on the suffering that nigerians are going through well i don't believe him hmm. uh, i'll say that um and i i believe a lot of people don't believe me some do believe him you see some that will defend him and you know say he's the best president that nigeria ever had but you have to consider that one thing about our people we we as people we seem to have short memory right and most of the time our leaders they know that about us and they use that emotional aspect of us as people to blackmail us Buhari knows you know the as an individual if you are doing something bad you will know deep inside you even if you don't agree there will be a time where you sit down by yourself and you look at things and you feel like i am i'm not doing good i'm not doing well i messed up right and probably at that moment that he sat down by himself and he looked at the situation of the country the father is in london for medical checkup and all that and he, he, he said to himself that these people elected me as president, but I've not done well. And he, he knows that, you know, the only way for the people not to, like, continue condemning him, because things are going to get worse in Nigeria. This are not, he's not going to get better. Things are yeah. going to get worse because of many reasons. You see, the war in Russia, Ukraine, is going to have effect on us. The oil price is going to increase. Nigeria doesn't refine its own crude oil and the fact that we're buying crude oil from international market the price is going up nigeria doesn't generate enough money a lot a lot of money right because mm. most of the money that we have we're using it to service loans that we've that these guys have collected over the period of let's say eight seven years right yeah. we have so many debt that we need to service we we're making money through crude oil but our stupidity doesn't make us to refine our own crude oil so we are buying the refined products at the international market we need to subsidize those fuel for the people because if we sell it to the people at that international price it's going to be too high we so the money the little money that we're making we are using it to subsidize the fuel right so we're not making money he knows if you are at that position as the president of the country you can see clearly and i think that's one of the reasons why he's coming out to say i apologize you guys i apologize for this and that because he noticed i'm gonna get worse and he, he i think it just comes out to like apologize for what is still coming not what people are facing at the moment what is still coming and you know many nigerians we kind of it's an old man let's forgive him he has apologized how many do, do you want him, Nigeria, do you want him to kill himself and all that so I don't believe him and i i see things getting worse for the people you may sound a little bit sad but that's the reality that we're facing in the country pessimistic yeah man and it's important we we talk about these things and we continue reminding ourselves why it is important for us to reject the system that we are in reject doing the same thing over and over that will continue putting you in the same place for example elections the elections are even fraudulent by the premise of the constitution if the election is going to be based on the constitution that is fraudulent i don't need to go into the details why the election the constitution is fraudulent we've all come to a unanimous decision on that so since the constitution is fraudulent why should we go on another election over that same constitution it's only going to produce pain lopsidedness unfairness lack of equity lack of fairness lack of justice that's what the another election is going to produce but sometimes within all the negativity that is going on you might be thinking let me try to salvage just a little bit of positivity so even though i know that this election is definitely fraudulent maybe i can still try and see if i can make the best out of that negative situation 
so maybe i will try to vote for a candidate that i genuinely believe will change things though a part of you is thinking will this candidate even win when two political organizations two criminal organizations pdp and apc are dominant and they are most likely going to come out with the winner so is it a waste of time for me to put my support behind an individual that i genuinely believe that he has what it takes to move this country forward and he has good intentions but he does not represent the two criminal organizations he is not from the pdp he is not from the apc he's from a smaller political party and he's not going to win we know that deep down in our hearts we know that already so what are we doing are we just trying to delude ourselves into you know just imagining a better future when we know that this is not going to happen but i digress i digress a lot as a matter of fact let's go back to the conversation around the police i'm going to share a video real quick i share a lot of stuff from shawere i like shawere a lot okay shawere is a is a real revolutionary do i want him to be nigeria's president i'll be honest with you a part of me does not want him to be nigeria's president because i know he will fail you see the way the nigerian system is set up is such a way that you will fail even if you have good intentions if you have good intentions to actually fix nigeria and move the country forward you will fail the system is designed to make you fail so the best thing and you can do is join them S say what you want to say bro and uh even if you try all your best just to make sure that you don't fail one thing they will do, the system, which is the political elite, will find a way to kill you. Will find a way to eliminate you. So, so there is no win-win situation here. It's more kind of like lose-lose. You will if feel, Shore becomes, bro. if Shore becomes the president, it's not gonna solve the Nigerian problem. The Nigerian problem is the system, is the way things are. And most of the time, you know, we blame the politicians. We blame the government you know the political elite and all that most of the time but the blame goes around to almost every Everybody. every individual in nigeria you know most of the yeah, time we don't talk about nigerians as people but we also share part of the blame yeah but but the truth is we nigerians to be honest we are corrupt as a people okay yes um it's as a result of in my opinion it's not even an opinion it's a fact this is this is not an opinion this is a fact the reason why corruption thrives and has become a part of our culture in nigeria today is because in the last 40 something years it has become a requirement for you as an average citizen to cut corners in order to get to the next level you have to trample upon other citizens to rise up to the top and that's just how it is. It's not a surprise that even kids that are trying to write their WAEC, their NECO, some SSC examinations, they engage in examination malpractice and they see nothing wrong in it. Okay. In fact, their teachers and their parents sometimes help them get the expo so that when those kids pass, from the teacher's perspective, it looks good on the school. Now the school becomes more legitimate because more students are passing WAEC and then more people are going to send their kids to that school. But the truth is, a lot of the teachers are handing out expos so that the kids can pass the exams. Same, things, same thing happens in the university settings. You are required by a lot of lecturers. These same lecturers that are striking right now in the ASU strike, a lot of times they just come to your classrooms in federal universities, polytechnics, a single lecturer comes out with an illegal pamphlet, okay, something that he created. It is his own um, property, right? It tells every student that you have to purchase this. Is it pamphlet that they call it? I can't remember now. You have to purchase this handout. this handout for 500 naira each times 200 students. If you don't, you're not going to be allowed to come write the exam. And the students are running frantically, all trying to raise 500 naira so they can buy the palm, the handout, so they can pass. That is corruption on its own. It's also corruption when you pass, you're, you've graduated from school, you're trying to get into the workplace, but you need to know your uncle 
that knows a minister or that knows a commissioner that way they can put your name in a slot that can help you get the job it's not about meritocracy it's not about the merit it's not about what you have upstairs it's about who you know nepotism so it has become a part of our culture and part of the people that institutionalized this culture where guys like Ibrahim Babangida, number one culprits. Ibrahim Babangida institutionalized nepotism, corruption. Sani Abacha came in and put the final nail in the coffin. Sani Abacha institutionalized corruption with impunity, whereby you can commit a crime, but as far as you are a powerful political elite, or a top military general back in the military times, or you are a you are affiliated to these elites. If you commit a crime, no problem. You're not going to jail. You're not going to get held accountable for committing a crime because the institutions are weak. The institutions can't even do nothing to you. It's so bad that even the one of the chief justices in the country, I'm talking about Odili, the wife of one of the former governors of, I think Rivers, Mrs. Odili's house was invaded allegedly by the office of the ministry of justice just because they don't want her to be the next person because she's right now the most senior judge in nigeria chief judge chief justice right the current chief justice is going to retire sometime this year i believe in may of 2022 once he retires the next in rank is mrs odili and mrs odili is probably not in line with the agenda of the current administration in terms of um, strangulating human rights and making your life difficult, period. She's probably not in line with that, and I'm not calling her an angel. But due to that fact, they tried to attack this woman in a house, sent unknown policemen, unknown military guys, unknown SSS people. Those guys, some of them were arrested. Now they've done investigation. They fingered it back to the Ministry of Justice. So this is the kind of society that we have. A country where illegality is legal. Okay, I'm done my right. Yeah, see. You know, what, what really brought up this conversation is the fact that we said, you know, and, and I try to bring this up because most of the time our listeners will be like, we just pointing all the fingers to the government and we calling them or we we making it sound like they are responsible for everything that's wrong in the country you know the truth is they are responsible for majority of what's wrong, wrong in the country yeah but that doesn't exonerate some other aspect of life in the country for the responsibility and the part they take in making the country the way it is you see our culture as people you know we've talked about this in terms of how the culture encourage you know older people that have committed crime to continue doing what they are doing because we don't want to blame them because you have to respect people that are older than you but also part of the culture that we've we can we can put the blame on the military government in the last 30 40 years but mm. part of the culture that because culture is a way of life for the people, right? It's yeah. all the ways of life where people decided this is one, the way we want to live in a society. We Nigerians, we've, uh, we've kind of accepted the culture of cutting corners. We've mm. accepted the culture of manipulating things. We've accepted the culture of being corrupt in every little position we find ourselves. The government... You know, the past government and the present government make this culture to be something that we become. But at the same time, we are, as people, are not rejecting it. And that's where I put the blame on the Nigerian people. We have to, at the point, reject being bad, becoming what the government wants us to become. Mm. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example for it. I'll give you an example. Nigerian roads and Nigerian gutters and drainage are filled yeah. with filth, yes. right? They are filled yes. with plastic bottle, water, you know, pure water, water bag, pure water bags, and all these sort of things. 
these are things that one way or the other are finding themselves into those drainage and when it rains it causes erosion flooding and all that right yeah. the 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 people the the one thing that is responsible for that are the people that are putting those gap rubbish in the drainage an average Nigerian will drink pure water or plastic bottle and driving on the road you cannot sweep with that plastic bottle in your car and get to your house and dispose it properly but guess what it will wind down his window and throw it on the road outside. throw it outside you know so things like that they are little things but they are things that define us as people and once we become accustomed to that way of life it's it become a ripple effect where things the system continue getting bad mm. you understand what i mean and we being the people that are corrupt ourselves it will be fine for us to question our leaders that are corrupt and that's true like if i'm an individual that cut corners that is always trying to outsmart other people i won't see something bad in what Buhari is doing mm. right because Buhari too is trying to outsmart nigerians you you made all these promises before you become president and you've you've done almost close to nothing out of all those promises that you made mm -hmm. right it's cutting corners it's making it's trying to outsmart nigerians it doesn't care about the well-being of the people you know it's it's a corrupted individual and me as a corrupt individual that that you know carry out exam practices you know i'm trying to cheat on other people you know it will be hard for me because my core value as an individual is as corrupt as buari the mm. only difference between us is buari is in a political power position i am not you mm. understand yeah. so that is why i say uh, in as much as we can put almost all the blame on our leaders and yeah. for some for for a good reason they are also the people that can made these changes for us as people right yes. in as much as we want to put those blame the blame on those people we also we have to individually look at ourselves and you know question our core values as people i agree i completely agree with you i was going to say that this analogy that you just broke down can you relate that with the police force because in the police force, mm -hmm. now they are also crying. We've all known for the longest time that the Nigerian police, they are suffering. Okay, they are suffering just mm -hmm. like Nigerians. But where the confusion comes in is that the suffering, poverty-stricken policemen will try to put further suffering on the already suffering citizens. So a poverty-stricken policeman is trying to punish and take advantage of a poverty-stricken citizen and it's just a mess of poverty-stricken people taking advantage of poverty-stricken people meanwhile the political elites okay in collaboration with their religious and traditional counterparts that put the people in this mess and i can explain how that happened the political mm -hmm. elites they, they simply they are in charge of the resources of the country they are in charge of the government they put us in this mess that we are in they collaborate with their religious elites, the two main religions in Nigeria, Christianity and, and Islam. They tell their top pastors and their top imams to continue telling their people. They give them money too, just so you know. The political elites give money to the religious elites and tell the religious elites to continue preaching stuff to the people that will calm them down and stop them from revolting against an unfair system. And that's why you see an average Nigerian these days, when you've elected a government that selected a minister of power, and now you don't have electricity, instead of holding the minister of power accountable and the, the government, you are saying, let's just pray that God will touch their hearts so that these people will give us light. Let's just pray, ah, God, please fix this country. No, God is not going to fix the country. It's human beings that will fix the country. God's job is to give us the brains to fix the country and if the brains that we have is to cheat and manipulate and oppress one another then god's your prayers will not work and that's why there is a collaboration between the political class 
and a religious class. Now, as far as the traditional class is concerned, the traditional class, these traditional rulers from all over the country, you find them, they never complain when things are bad. You see, when you hear about, oh, there is a massacre happening in um, Ikongo, for example, in one local government in or your state, you don't find all these their traditional rulers coming out and condemning it in the strongest terms or calling the people, the culprits out in their names. You will never hear a traditional ruler from um, or your state or Ogun state that will come out and say, oh, these full and these terrorists from the bushes that are killing our people, we have to condemn it. They won't do that because if they do, now they are stepping on the toes of the government and they don't want to do that because if they step on the toes of the government, the government can mess them up. Okay, so they are only protecting what concerns them. They don't give a damn about you. But at the same time, those traditional elites will tell you, oh, you have to be subordinate to us. You, our people, you have to follow your culture and your tradition and you have to be subordinate to us elders and you have to listen to us. What are you talking about, bro? You, you are a supporter of PDB and APC criminals. Why should I be subordinate to you? You are just like them. So that is a collaboration between the political, traditional and religious societies in Nigeria. But I, I've deviated again. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually wanted to say something when you were talking about not having power and kind of taking uh, minister of power being responsible for lack of power in the country, electricity in the country. You know, we pray that God, you know, um, let him do what he's supposed to do, right? Yes. But there's, some, there's something funny that I wanted to say. We also pray for the transformer not to be blowing up. You know, we've shared we've shared a video where Nigerians, you know, go to a transformer and they were praying that this transformer, the evil spirit in the transformer should, you know, move out of that transformer, cast you out, and we pray for this transformer not to be blowing up. It's you know, ridiculous, man. It is ridiculous. And, and I said this uh, one time ago that we've been chained physically by the government right yes we've been chained mentally but you cut out there bro you cut out okay when you Hello? come back okay yeah you're back now yeah keep keep going keep going oh sorry yeah so i said we've been chained mentally right can you hear yes. what i'm saying yes absolutely we've been chained we've been, mentally. Chained, we've been chained physically and economically by the government yes right We've been chained mentally by our religious leaders. Yes. And we've been chained culturally, traditionally by our traditional leaders. Absolutely. So we, we've been caged as people. So when you even see that there's problem, so take, for example, the problem of inflation that is affecting almost all the, the, the prices of everything. Yes. The food price is going up. Like, you can't even imagine how much they sell. Um one one egg or, one egg or is one, yeah one bag of pure water for example you know everything is going up right yes and we see the problem nobody needs to tell you before you know that um, this is this is unseen this is this is ridiculous how can i buy one egg for 200 or 100 right mm. you see the problem but in as much as you see the problem the problem being inflation problem now which is economical problem yes we've been chained mentally by believing that you know the only solution we have for this problem is to pray for our leaders hmm. we are not seeing the solution from the angle that this inflation what's responsible for this inflation what is the government doing about this how can we make sure this doesn't happen right yes. we've been chained culturally by not being bold enough or confident enough to question the state governor and face him and say, Mr. Uh, Sonwolu, for Lagos State Governor, for example, why is the price of this commodity in the state of Lagos, this is three times or four times higher than the price two years ago, right? So we've been, we've been, Chained in all aspect of life that it is now difficult for us to ask for answers to our problems. <laughs> yeah. 
so that that's the thing that's the thing and in as much as at times you know when someone listen to our conversation or conversation related to us you know like um like my ego conversation other people conversation that complain about things happening in nigeria people will ask you oh you guys are always complaining or talking about the problem what's the solution what's the solution what's the solution and everybody want the solution i want the solution you want the solution everyone of us want the solution because we've been complaining about this for you know as long as i can remember but we need to bear in mind that for us to get the solution that we seek the solution of a better country the solution of you know we live in a country that will be proud of the solution of people that are living outside the country coming back to the country with peace of mind of not being kidnapped or killed or you know something bad happening to them for us to get those solutions we need to change who we are as people we have to change our fundamental core values as people we have to be less corrupt people and we have to be a country that cherish merit over you know who you know or connection or favoritism or nepotism we have to be country that value those you know good values in people for us to find solution to these problems if we don't what we are doing is finding a way to distract ourselves from the problems and trying to like you know look away from those problems especially if you are doing fine as an individual yourself and that's what most people do you know most people once they are able to eat three square meals they forget about nigerians that can't even afford to eat one meal in a day and we feel like oh i'm eating three square meals is not my problem right but you need to know that the fact that there are people that are not able to eat one meal in a day and you've been able to eat three square meals you will push those people that can't eat three square meals to find a means for them to get those three square meals some of them will go into kidnapping some of them will go into harm robbery some of them will go into ritual ritualism and what you're getting is a country that is one way or the other encouraging people to becoming terrible people because most of us that can say something and do something decided not to do anything and, and that's exactly what i was saying bro that the country actually made us terrible we were in this way like 40 something years ago an average nigerian was a decent human being you know but fast forward in 2022 man most people are desperate people are looking for any means necessary to get to the next level to escape poverty even if they have to hurt other people and that's mm -hmm. why we are where we are today but let me let me share this video this is still in relation to the nigerian police right because you know we started this conversation with the police the police are complaining just like everybody else oh we are tired of we are tired of our welfare our salary is small our barracks are shit holes you know our barracks bro our barracks we don't have sanitation we don't have electricity imagine police officer that has to go and, sleep and protect all day long he wakes up in the morning no water coming out of his tap no electricity in his house let me share a video a picture of the, of the house that i'm talking about no, don't, don't let me get ahead of myself bro no water no electricity now that police officer has to go fetch water from the well in his barracks a filthy barracks you can imagine how the bathroom is smelling the toilet is disgusting these guys are going to shit in the bushes doing short put okay because they don't have um a sanitation system they don't have electricity no basic amenities for these police officers what makes it worse is that a lot of these low-ranking police officers they are required to even get their own uniforms by themselves and their salary is just forty thousand naira. and then these same people that are poverty stricken and are suffering like crazy they hand them ak-47 assault rifles to go and serve and protect and then this is the same kind of country where there is really no judiciary so when these police officers have their ak-47s they can easily use it to rob the citizens and they go scot-free and that's where we are so omoyele shore has a quick message for these police officers and i want you guys to take a quick listen at what he had to say here 
know how to also stay unbiased. Mm -hmm. That's their problem. That's how we have problem with them. Exactly. But they must not forget that when this country gets better, the police will also enjoy. I don't know why. I don't know why police. Yes. I don't, I don't, yes. We are tired of smiling and uh, suffering and smiling police as well. Stop mm -hmm. supporting those people who are oppressing Nigerians, policemen. Stop! Defend your brothers and sisters. And your children. Your, your children also deserve to be going to a good school. Yes. They deserve to be going abroad, you know. Stop carrying bags for girlfriends and uh, wives of corrupt politicians. And stop shooting at your brothers and sisters who are engaging in reform of the country. Stop killing the future of your children. That's what we want to advise you. So... So that's a great advice for the Nigerian police. And that brings us back to why they were even protesting. Because they have a scheduled strike coming up March 26th. They are going to gather themselves at the Eagle Square in Abuja. And in that gathering, they plan to show their grievances to the Inspector General of Police on their welfare, their poor salary structure. They even compare their salary with the EFCC. The EFCC level three officers get paid 200,000 naira, but level three officers in the police, they get paid 40 something thousand naira. I remember during the NSAS, you know, the police were also used as a tool to quench the, the protest. The Nigerian, and this is the irony, Nigerians were protesting NSAS, which should have been an opportunity to protest for the end of the constitution, but we missed it. Anyways, Nigerians were protesting NSAS. SARS is the department, the unit in the police that is um, um, responsible for violent crimes, uh, kidnappers, armed robbers, and stuff like that. But these SARS guys were already punishing Nigerians. But instead of the police officers that the Nigerians were actually protesting in their support, because you protesting to end SARS, reform the police, improve their salaries, that is beneficial for the police. But these same police guys were the ones that were killing the Nigerians that were protesting because the politicians told them, go and kill those protesters. Those protesters are not for you. They are not for this country. They want to destroy this country. So go out there, disperse them through enemies necessary, even if you have to open fire on them. And that's exactly what the police did. But we saw Omoye Le Shore in that video now, just telling them that you need to stop killing us because we are the same. And fast forward, Today, the police are trying to embark on a strike, saying, oh, we are treated like slaves, our salary is trash, our police barracks, look at the police barracks, look at the police barracks. Our police barracks is pure garbage, look at police barracks. This is how it is across the country. Just look at, you can imagine how this place stinks. The building looks like it's about to collapse. They even manage, they even get DSTV, they, they watch cable. With which light, which electricity? I bet you they don't have electricity. Their children go to the worst schools. These same police officers, the junior ranked ones, you find them following politicians all over the place, carrying the handbags for the girlfriends of politicians. And you as a citizen, if you dare protest and say, oh God, police, what thing you they do? Policeman, why will you be stooping so low and be carrying the, the handbag of this corrupt politician's girlfriend, the policeman will beat the shit out of you, bro. He will beat the fuck out of you unless you are connected yourself. If you are connected to one of these high-ranking people that can save you, that can make sure you don't sleep in Galo, you don't sleep in the cell that night, then you might be rescued. But other than that, the police does the biddings of the politicians, which enslaves everybody, including the police. You know... <laughs> So, yeah, thank, I'm, I'm grateful that Omoya Lechore is always able to convey his messages in a very clear way. Um, people don't like the guy because he's just blunt. The police officers in Abuja, they, they are even tired of him because they've arrested him like 50 times and the guy just never stops. He's always there in their face. Shore is actually a hero and I, I truly wish him the best. I, like I keep saying, I don't want him to be the president of Nigeria because if he magically, because I don't even think he can win, but if he can magically win, they will still crush his efforts. But I might be wrong. Who knows? I might, I might actually be wrong. It'll be nice to be able to have a conversation with Shore and ask him some very tough questions like, bro, how do you intend to, to maneuver the House of Representatives and the Senate if you become the president? How are you going to go against the grain? 
because they are going to be against you the entire senate and the house of representatives whatever move you're trying to make they will block it because they hate you and they know that you are there to send them to prison for being corrupt politicians how are you going to maneuver that those are some kind of tough questions that i would have loved to ask shore if i ever get the opportunity but yeah that's um for the first part the show is about to be over we're going to be done in about 10 minutes i have one more aspect that i was going to touch on and this has to do with south africa this is um foreign well it's still an african news and this is the african wahala we talk about the wahalas that go around that happens to africans all over the world not just nigerians so south africa is about to be a mediator between the russian and ukrainian crisis and i can tell you the reason why the reason is because recently when um the united nations and a group of other countries brought an opportunity for different countries in the world to vote for or against the invasion of russia of ukraine by russia many african countries um voted against russia some voted in support of russia some stood neutral and one of the neutral countries was south africa when south africa stood neutral it put itself in a position where it wasn't against russians and it wasn't against ukraine now the western um societies began putting so much pressure on south africa telling them that you guys need to take a stand against russia because what they are doing is unfair and me personally i have my opinions i'm not even going i'm not going to go into that nigeria took a stance against russia voted against russia just like many other countries and now russia is open to having south african delegates come in as mediators in a mediating process that would eventually seek the end of the russian ukraine conflict what do you have to say about that bro what do you think do you think that is commendable of south africa to have been neutral in that conversation do you think nigeria was being its usual self by picking a side being its usual puppet self you know nigeria is a puppet nation south africa too is a puppet nation to a large extent but not as puppet puppetry if that is a correct word <laughs> nigeria. what do you have to say about that bro I like that one for Petri. <laughs> Let's get one thing. Nigeria as a country is not puppet, puppet per se, but our leaders are puppet of the Western influence. Mm. We need to get that clear. Um, when it comes to Ukraine Russia war, as an African myself, as an African, i take a neutral stand when it comes to that and mm. the reason why i'm taking a neutral stand is the two leaders fighting themselves is vladimir and volodymyr right if i, yeah. if I get their names, names right none of them bears Ade, adebola or <laughs> or chinedu yeah. or, or Adamu, right yeah or or or, or Abiodu. none of them bears an African name. So why mm. should I be concerned about their war? The only concern I will have is if their war is affecting global economy, which is what is happening to the crude oil price, right? And yeah. the reason why the pump price in Nigeria is going up. Yes, I'll be concerned about it. But taking aside that Russia, you know, I support you or Ukraine, I support you as an African, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But the Nigerian government, we know they are puppet to 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 the West, right? Yes. Whatever the West says or do is what the Nigerian government is gonna do. And we know really? the reason why they are they are puppet to them. And and the reason is through the support of the West, these guys can do as they like, right? They and when we weapons. come out, they can acquire weapons from the West, and when we Nigerians come out to protest one way or the other or we decide we want to break up the country they have a, a they have people to call on they have a backup to support all the bad things they are doing this is mm. kind of getting deep into international discussion yeah. but i commend the south african government for taking a neutral stand i commend them for being a mediator in this situation for me personally i i believe dialogue is better than war 
you know, it, it, no matter where you look at it from, if you are in support of Russia or Ukraine, I see Nigerians going back and forth on social media, on Naira land, you know, some pro-Russia, some pro-Ukraine. No matter where you look at it from, war is not good. I, I personally prefer dialogue because even if you fight the war, you're still going to dialogue at the end of the day. So why not yeah. do dialogue and not, and not put a lot of people, millions of people in suffering? Yeah. Right? And, you know, the only people that are suffering from this whole thing are Ukrainians and uh, Russian soldiers that, that are dying from this war and Ukrainians that, are, you know, millions of who have become refugees in other countries. Yeah. And some of who, their houses, their property have been destroyed completely. So... Those are the only people that are suffering from this. And, and I also need to point out that <clears throat> during the Second World War, Switzerland, even though it was right in the middle of the conflicting parties in Europe, Switzerland hmm. took a neutral stand. And up to date, neutral, Switzerland is known as the neutral country, right? Wow. And the reason why most headquarters in the world are situated in Swiss, Switzerland is because Switzerland always take a neutral stand. There's nothing bad in you taking a neutral stand in a mm -hmm. war because, you know, the two warring parties have, you know, they believe they are right, you know, and you will not be 100% sure, you know, you can as well be in the middle and take a neutral stand instead, instead of supporting one over the other one. So it's always good to be on a neutral stand. South Africa has done well. At least their government are more responsible than the Nigerian government yeah. for being neutral in this situation. And I just hope, you know, um, Putin and Zelensky can agree and decide to end this war for the suffering of the people that are suffering in Ukraine. And, you know, on just to round up on that particular thing, to double down some of the things that you said, it's important that you think twice before you start taking a stance because mm -hmm. we we've been going through wars for time since 2009 nigeria has been fighting against boko haram without success between 2009 and today 2022 the boko haram has evolved into about four or five different terrorist groups now you even have iswap that came in from as, as far as Mali, Chad, all those West African Sahel region, they now operate in Nigeria. They even hoisted their flag in Shiroro local government, close to the um, Shiroro ele electrical dam, right? So mm -hmm. we have problems with terrorism. We have people that have been invading different communities for decades. People are getting killed all the time. Who has ever come to stand in your support? Now, you, you, you said something about refugees, millions of refugees from Ukraine. And I'm not trying to downplay the suffering of people in any way, shape or form. If anything, I am completely against Russia killing innocent Ukrainian women and children. OK, I understand Russia has its reasons for invading Ukraine. But the fact that you are putting people through suffering, I condemn that. But I'm still taking a neutral stance in the war. However, the fact that we... We have over 10 million refugees in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we have over 10 million refugees. Let that sink in. They are called IDPs. They live in internally displaced people's camps. Some are refugees in foreign countries. You have them in refugees in Niger. Imagine you're a refugee in Niger. There was a story where some Nigerian refugees that ran away to Niger had to run back to Nigeria after some months because they were attacked in where in their refugee camp in Niger. So you're a refugee from Nigeria in Niger. Now you run away from Niger back to Nigeria as a refugee. If you go to Cameroon, we have over a million Nigerian refugees in Cameroon right now as we speak. If you go to Benin Republic, bro, just January of 2021, there were at least 10,000 refugees from Okun State that ran away to Pobe. In a republic so we have our own conflict has anybody come to stand for us nobody comes to stand for us we are on our own the only thing that they do is these are our criminal leaders they collab that have been collaborating with the imperialists the criminal leaders run to the western nations and china and russia to everybody like prostitutes and say please sell us guns we need to use these guns to defend our territory 
And then what ends, ends up happening? More of our people are getting killed. More people are becoming refugees. The military generals are becoming billionaires. And the terrorism is not solved for over a decade. So please, before you think about jumping too deep into other people's conflicts, remember that you have your own conflict in your own backyard that needs to be dealt with. And nobody is going to stand for you. You have to deal with your conflict yourself. And that's what I have to say about that. And with that being said, brother, we can round up the show now. You can give your final closing words. Nigerian police fight on the side of the people. Nigerian soldiers fight on the side of the people. Because, you know, we need you when the time comes for us to get a better Nigeria. You know, we can get it done without shedding blood or you know doing something really tragic we can get it on by protesting by putting the right people in power by you know asking our leaders to do the right thing and these are not too much things to ask for no. right and when we do this protest and this asking and this you know strike all these things we need you to be on the side of the people because you are suffering as much as we are suffering. So it doesn't make any sense for you to, to continue supporting the people that are making every one of us to suffer, right? That's mm. my message for Nigerian police. I know, you know, it's probably not going to get to them. You know, they've been constantly being used for... Uh, uh, for as tools for this political class and this uh, religious class and traditional class, right? They're being used as tools for them. But I just wish at a point they will they will stand with the people because when they stand with us, it will be easier for us to move the country in the right way. Because guess what? This same Nigerian police that wants to go on strike complaining about their living condition and wages and, and salaries. If the Nigerian youth or Nigerian people come out to protest for first scarcity, the same police will be used to quench the, the, the protest. So of what point does it make for them to continue fighting for the people that are oppressing every one of us, including them? So they need to, at the point, you know, to think about their life and, you know, do the right thing, which is been on the side of the people absolutely man and that is well said man um trust me this message will get to at least one police officer you'll be surprised the way the universe works this message will be received by at least one police officer and if that happens or when that happens we've succeeded okay because the bottom line is you policemen you need to realize that you are the same as us no difference you're also victims of the evil system and we're all trying to destroy that system so that we can have a chance at a life of dignity. That's all it is. But when you guys have made yourselves an opposition to us, the people that are trying to find a solution to this mess that affects all of us, including you, the police, then that's a problem. You are being a tool, just like my brother just said, you are being a tool to the system, a system that is made to impoverish us and keep us enslaved and keep us as second class citizens. You are being a tool. And then guess what happens? After your life is already trashed by your police institution, then your IGP, your Inspector General of Police, comes out and says, please pray for your salaries to be paid this month. That's what the IG said. But I'm, I'm, we're not gonna go, we're not gonna touch that conversation. It's we've already talked about that during the course of this video. So thank you for watching the live stream. If you enjoyed the content, click on the like button, share the content. You can rewind it when the live stream is over. Watch it from the beginning if you want to. And with that being said, peace. Thanks for coming through, brother. Ololade. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, sir.
rappers keep dropping out of school cause my daddy's a mess with them they say life is crazy i'm passing to the pain every day so my eyes are hazy i'm going to school trying to learn something but i know no book cause i ain't thought nothing my teacher is hungry he's paid and change matter of fact he's waiting for his pain day so he goes on a strike and i'm left in the streets i'm bogged all day by efcc cause my money's in the west indies or yankee thing on the internet that's the recipe i gotta swim the man i need money in my drawers now this con man calling us wild wild boys the prison with badu it's so hard to handle tell him go get ipp I'm a street mic, I'm in the street every day and night trying to get the cheese, I'm devious. I make you bleed like a chick on a period. So don't stop my shine, man. Cause that blood with a thick rhyme, man. Let's walk, let's talk. Street mics! I got a lot on my mind. This coach got me speaking my mind. Street mics! I go young. Let's walk, let's talk. Street mics! I got a lot on my mind. This coach got me speaking my mind. Street mics! I go young. It's crazy where I come from, sitting here feeling like some lost son. Every day I pray to God, hope he see me to the top. My mama prayed to, but she don't know I need some real cash soon. She don't want me doing the things I do, like chilling in the hood, hanging with the bad boys too. I gotta hustle like it's a curse. It's a story of a cold war, life in the streets. So ghetto kids, misery, it was food to eat. Got found on a dump hill. Now he's a slum kid doing dumb things. Got no home to stay except some bridge. Now he sticks you up for your jewelry. Who's to blame? Is it him or the society?